cosine, right? Was it sine? Oh, cosine, yeah. Cosine of that thing, right? OK, so and then that's milliamps. So now we've got to square that. And then the milliamp squared would be 10 to the minus uh, 6. And then the cosine squared of that thing. OK? So what would that be here? Ooh. I'm getting 3.91 micro cosine squared of that thing microjoules. But what should I get? The maximum energy stored in the inductor should be the same as the capacitor. So this is unacceptable. Well, it's because of the rounding, all the little roundings that I did. So I got to either justify them, or I got to either change that or change that to make them the same, you know. So let's just say for the, that this is 3.55. The best way to do, would, to do it would be just to do a, un, you know, a, you know what? I think this is the more, uh, there's no less rounding here, right? Because. Uh, 1.25 was, I think, an exact number, wasn't that? Which one is wrong? Oh, 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 oh. I wonder why, I, yeah, I, I didn't, it was 0.2. So what was this one? Oh, that makes sense, okay. So is that going to make that... Uh, Three point, now it's 3.9? Oh, it is. Oh, okay. That, that answers that then. Okay, so 3.9. Perfect. Yeah, so it's really making sense when we do all the numbers and equations and everything comes out so great because the maximum energy of the inductor shouldn't be more than that. They should just keep giving energy to each other. Now, how much is the energies off by? What fifth angle are they off by? Let's see, one is a sine squared function, one is a cosine squared function. If we were to graph them, what would that look like? The energy of the capacitor is a sine squared, so it starts out as zero and goes up and then just keeps going like this. This is UC. Energy of the inductor is a cosine squared, so it starts out at its max. So energy of the inductor is this one. So they're off by a phase of 90, not 180. Okay, the voltage is off by 180, but the energy is off by 90. And it should be off by 90, because they should transfer energy to each other. They shouldn't be 180. Okay? When one of them is, when, uh, when the mechanical equivalent is kinetic energy and potential energy, right? When kinetic energy is... Uh, zero, potential energy should be at its max, and then vice versa. So that's, off, that's being off by uh, 90, okay? So uh, they're off by uh, out of phase by pi over 2. Okay, and then if I want to know what is the energy at 2 seconds, I can just simply put it in and calculate it. I'm not going to now, but it's pretty straightforward. Now, D, how many seconds does it take for UL to be 3 UC? So basically, what that is doing is just giving you a certain situation where you're required to solve for T. UL is 3 UC. So 
So basically, you get the UL uh, for equation is equal to 3 uh, times UC equation. And UC is what? Same thing, 3.91 sine squared. And what do we get out of that? The 3.91 cancels the 3.91. Uh, then I could take the cosine squared under there. You got tangent squared, right? So one third is equal to tan squared, right? So tangent of that is equal to one over root three, or it could be plus or minus, right? Uh, one over root three, and. Therefore, this thing is tan inverse of that. So omega t is equal to, uh, this one is omega t, is equal to tan inverse of 1 over root 3. So in other words, there's many times where the, that this situation is um, satisfied. Any angle for which tangent of that angle is one, uh, plus or minus 1 root 3 so it could be uh, any angle it could be like uh, plus it could be 1 over root 3 uh, or it, it could be plus or minus uh, so it would be like this look tan inverse of 1 over root 3 the next time tangent is positive right so it would be in the uh, the third quadrant right so it'll be plus pi n Right? Or, or any other answer like this, tan inverse of negative 1 over root 3 plus pi n. So there's mo multiple times when that situation is satisfied. So let's say the equation wants to know the first time when that situation is satisfied. What is the first time? Or let's say, what is the first and second time? So all you would need to do is this and this, and then uh, that's it. The other ones are multiples of that. Can be a very small time divided by 22,000. Uh, what was the number? 20. I erased it, huh? What was my omega? 22,000. So you get tan inverse of 1 over root 3 divided by 22,941.57. Uh, so T1 is equal to. Uh, I guess I could write it this way, 22.8 microseconds, right? That's the first time when it's satisfied. Uh, T2 is going to be this one, right? Hundred and fourteen point one microseconds, right? And then after that, uh, more pi n multiples of that, where that condition is satisfied. So there's uh, some good uh, trig there. Um, okay. Now the last question: What will an ammeter in the circuit measure? Now this kind of already jumps us forward to chapter 33, which we're about to start, because we're going to learn that an ammeter, the, the current function was what? I keep erasing it, 
when the 8.7 uh, cosine